Hi, this is Peter. Hi, this is Sandra. And we are Medievalist.net. And today we're talking to you about... The Borgias. <laughs> I'm going to get you a mask so you can see that into the camera that way. Um, again, we're ha I'm really, really enjoying this season and uh, the plot thickens and all kinds of craziness ensues in this episode. Um, but I just wanted to, I don't know, where do you want to start with... Uh, Julia Farnese and... Oh, there's, this was the uh, lots of sex episode, so... Right. They, uh... And, uh, I don't know, which, which, uh... Well, let, let's, 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 let's hold off on that. Let, let's start with the fact that Rodrigo is cleaning house, and he puts in a whole bunch of new cardinals, because uh, this is building yeah, up yeah, to yeah. your story. All right. Say. And, you know, he puts in Julia Farnese's brother... Um, who turns out to be dumb and incompetent, and he well, finds yeah. out that Julia's handwriting is all over the he, treasury he, accounts yeah. because her brother, who she's put forth for accounting, can't do any of the work. So he's paranoid mm -hmm. because Rodrigo's gotten to the point right where he's paranoid, and it's, she said, "Hey, let's 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 have a little party to prove." These to to get these cardinals to sort of enforce loyalty, because we want to blackmail them. So you have them. So you want to fill in oh, about okay. this this scene in, in the what was uh, it called? The dance of chestnuts. The banquet of the chestnuts. The banquet of the chestnuts. So my pardon me. In the story, of this in the story of the Borgias, it's all the card. It's Julia Farnese setting up all the cardinals with fifty prostitutes. Um, now it were they dressed as nuns in the real deal? No, no. In, okay. okay, the real deal, and the Burkhard, the person that you kind of see this kind of recording, it's the, he's that kind of famous chronicler uh, from from the period. He has this um, tale that you know of the bank of the chestnuts, which has it in his version. It's Cesare Borgia that holds this uh, banquet, brings in fifty prostitutes. Mm -hmm. They've you know uh, various things happen. There's a big orgy. Uh, and he lays it all on Cesare, and Rod and the Pope may have been involved, yes or no, we don't know. Um, and that's his kind of version. So they kind of t took that little bit, and then they kind of uh, turned it around instead of being like a Borgia cr crime. They kind of laid on the Cardinals. They kind of, again, like this, sometimes they, they take the history and make it, uh, because the Borgias are the heroes in this, they can't have them... Partaking, you know, partaking in the debauchery. And, and like, yeah, or like orchestrating it uh, <laughs> and being the centers of it. So. so there's a historical background for you. It sort of happened, but just not quite the way that yeah. Hollywood wants you to think it happened. The, but it was an interesting scene nonetheless. Yeah, I thought like, it was a great story in terms of framing, which this is something I want to go back to in, in this episode. Lucrezia, Julia Farnese, and Katarina Swartza. I have to say, the men in this show are starting to look like bumbling idiots. And the women behind the men in this show are really politically savvy and know how to play the game. So Julia Farnese, in this version, concocts this chestnut dance. What is it again? The banquet. banquet. The chestnut, chestnut banquet. And then we have Katarina Swartza plotting some debauchery to try and nail Rodrigo. And then we have Lucrezia, who's put in a really uncompromising position, um, sort of in a motherly way guiding her virginal husband mm -hmm. through a very uncomfortable situation and, and playing her cards. All three of them, I think I really enjoy, I really enjoy this episode for the fact that, again, Women sort of proverbially are coming out on top. They, uh, who who knew that abortions was a, a female uh, friendly show? <laughs> not not that not that from what I saw today. Man, it really uh, put up the sex out. Right. Today. So let's get to right on to that. Oh, no. I will the King of Naples. I thought that was a bit of a ridiculous scene. I can't ever see that the Pope. And Cesare would have ever allowed that. Like those characters, like just judging from the characters on this TV, they would no way would would always say, "Well, there's precedent, and maybe we can do." It. No, they would just find some other way. 
they would never like humble themselves to that extent. I, I, I think that was made for TV and for a little bit of tackiness and your viewing pleasure and you know it was is it, it, you know that that whole scene with the king of Naples and Cesare watching Lucrezia and Alfonso consummate their mm-hmm. marriage. I think it was definitely thrown in just for a furthering of this this plot line. Yeah, like well, I, I can I can see why they did it. You know, it just it just doesn't rank to me as judging by their characters. That's that's something that they would allow for. This is this is season one or two of Borgias. These guys would not. You know, they no. the The thing is, um, what I find interesting is that while Fonso is. I'm trying to find a non-R-rated word to put in there. Having sex with <laughs> Lucretia. He, um, sorry, she spends her time getting hot and bothered and eyeballing her brother through the veiled curtain and he's getting all upset and hot and bothered. It was a very strange scene, you know? It, well, and, yeah, and, and he... for me, I knew right away there, I'm like, She's picturing Cesare on top of her for sure. Well, the King of Naples, he was—he was pretty funny as his. Yeah, his he was reaction. grunting and sort of clapping and clicking and yeah, clucking yeah, and making noises. Go, go, go! Look, he did well. You know, he was pretty funny in this episode. I have to say, you know. Right. Did you do what was it, the dog style? <laughs> dog style. That was pretty funny. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, Alfonso's still pretty spineless, and Lucas is kind of leading him away. And then uh, lastly, we sort of have like a smaller storyline. You know, Cardinal Rutucci, who uh, burned the library down around everyone's ears, has made off into the foothills to a nunnery and granted these lovely ladies all their titles in perpetuity back forever and ever. Amen. Despite Rodrigo. Well, unfortunately, Cesare says to uh, find him. (laughs) Michelotto, he runs off. I love how and he does that. He just goes into his ear. He's like, find him. Mm-hmm. And Nicoletta just yeah. heads off like he a GPS. He, 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 he made me and Nicoletta, well, who? And he won. Or just, just, he just, they, but uh, I thought that was, you were right. That's mm-hmm. hysterical. He walks up to his ear and just says, find him. And, and he's off like a shot in the horse. And five I, minutes later, he's at the correct nunnery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nicoletta, like, somehow, like, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of places in Italy to go to. Like, I've visited Italy. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's, you can go to a lot of places, you know, it, so... That was like a scene right out of The Godfather, too. Like, the, the, the whole thing with Rattucci uh, killing himself. Yeah, it was, it was just kind of silly, and, you know, I don't, I don't know I don't know what the point was. It, that was, yeah, it was, that was a bit of a throwaway like, moment, I should, think. Shouldn't Michelotto be, you know, with Cesare right now, like, going up to France? Isn't that his job, you know? Isn't right, that, and Venice... What's he, what's he going to do now? Just sit there and wait, you know, no one to kill... Right. No one to do, nothing to do for. You. He's not gonna be like, uh, hey, no, Pope Alexander, I got you covered. Lastly, we have uh, Rodrigo calling a crusade and taxing the merchants. They're not too happy about that. that Cesare's that, off to France to find a bride who isn't related to him. Yeah. <laughs> so the um, again, there's a little history there. What like the Pope did explore like options of doing a crusade with the Venetians. Against the Turks, um, I don't think anything came of it. Uh, so, again, they you know they take a little bit of history through you know spice sort it up, of spice it up for TV. But uh, it was a good episode nonetheless. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed a lot of uh, intrigue, a lot of drama, a lot of sexiness, and uh, mm-hmm. I think I I uh, I liked it. I'm curious to see what happens. You know, if now that Cesare is gone, Lucrezia will have some kind of a relationship, like in historically she did initially, like Alfonso mm-hmm. when they were first married. But I guess we'll see for next week. Yeah, and uh, we will be back next week with another episode of the Porsches. Do it differently than me. I do it happy. Okay. Good night. Good night.